Good morning, everyone. So we are again yet ready with our master class. That is master class nine. We have in the past conducted eight successful master classes. So if you want to like view the recording, you can always come to our site and watch it anytime. Okay. This will be free for everyone actually. And in this master class, we are going to cover a very important topic that is machine learning and its applications in finance. Okay, so we will wait for a couple of minutes. We'll wait for joiners to attend, and then we'll start with our sessions. As you can see on the screen, we have the topics listed for our discussions. So be prepared for any questions that you have, and in the end, we can have a question and answer session where I'll be trying to answer all your your questions, and if not. I'll be definitely answering you in in kind of like mails or query boards. Okay. So yeah, see you in five minutes.
Okay, so we'll start now. We can expect more guests to come soon as we can go slowly in the beginning. So this, as of today, like it's 3rd of September, 2023. And AI is kind of a buzzword in kind of like our daily lives, okay? Specifically the generative AI part, the NLP and the Gen AI, okay? So we have seen models like ChatGPT and BERT and models being launched by many other companies. Okay? They have been like being used widely and they have started a kind of a transformation in the human history. Okay, So in the future, this period will be like remembered as a kind of like, you know, the elbow, the inflection point where machine learning and AI became mainstream. In the previous decades or previous era of computer science and information technology, we have seen a great rise of applications of web development to hardware and architecture. And now this going further, we can see a huge boom in the kind of like artificial intelligence and machine learning. We have seen Tesla being like uh, focusing heavily on autonomous vehicles. We have seen OpenAI being heavily invested into natural language processing and generative AI. We have seen mid-journey that is kind of like creating beautiful artistic imagery all out of imaginations just by connecting some dots. Okay. So this is the first master class that we are doing on machine learning and here we are not going to in depth about all of those things. We will be just be scratching the surface going through the introduction and in the end, we will be like, uh, by the end of this course, we will be focusing on finance, okay? So how machine learning is currently being used in finance, how we can use it for our own uh, goal seeks and how are the regulatory challenges that is happening, okay? And what is the future roadmap? So these all are things that we are going to discuss in this masterclass. In the upcoming masterclass, I have uh, actually ambitious plans for master classes where I'll be like uh, having a live coding sessions where I'll be like coding along with you can also code and we can achieve some conclusion whether a model works or whether it doesn't work how can we can improve the accuracy and how we can like have some more robustness like more explainability explainability is kind of a Yeah, so pardon me for a moment. Okay, so explainability is kind of a important aspect and we'll be discussing it in the regulatory challenges, why it is important and how we are tackling it, okay? So we can have models as complex as we want, but the thing is that there are certain resource limitations that we need to consider each and every time we train a model or test a model or deploy a model. In the all three cases, we have to take into consideration various constraints and parameters, okay? Moving on, like, uh, let me share my presentation slides and then we'll be discussing each and every topics and going further, yeah. I'll be sharing my slides, just a second. Yeah. 
So as I have already discussed, like uh, what we are going to discuss in this masterclass going forward, like what are the applications that we see around in our day to day life in the field of machine learning. Okay, so there are many subtle applications that are there, but we are not able to see it. We are not able to visualize it because it kind of became a mainstream. Okay, so whenever Amazon or Netflix or kind of these platforms recommend something, it's kind of becoming a natural for us. Okay. We do not even think for a while that are we even using machine learning or not. Okay, it's kind of something ingrained in our personality. Okay, that we use it, but we do not even realize that we are using it. Okay? So, image and video analysis okay? in traffic departments, people are using machine learning to identify the number plates. Okay, so these kind of like image processing and video processing. In some places, there is a rampant use of machine learning. In some places, there is a kind of like a conventional approach of image processing and video processing. Okay? In the sector of entertainment, as I have already discussed, how YouTube and Netflix, they use machine learning to recommend their upcoming episodes or new channels to you. Okay? So that you can be hooked to their site so that you can continually consume their content and then they can generate or improve their profit margins of your time, of your attention. Okay? They can sell more ads to you. Amazon can sell more products to you. Okay? So if you are using helmets, once you have bought a bike, you will be using, uh, you'll be shown some like recommendation of gloves or bike gears. Okay? So this is a perfect example of recommendation system how they are using recommendation system that is a part of machine learning to improve their profit margins. So once you are kind of like just taking an example, if you go to Amazon and search for a bike helmet, they will automatically recommend you gloves and kit and repair kits and something like that. You won't even require, but once they have recommended those things, something has been implanted into your mind that, okay, once I'm buying a bike, somewhere in the future, I may need these things, okay? So maybe not that instant, but again and again, if you are seeing the same ad, you'll be buying, you'll be, you'll end up buying those things. Okay? This is how they ramp up the profit margin. In the healthcare, kind of like, it's becoming really uh, tough for everyone to have an access to, good quality hospitals and better facilities. So they are kind of like being left out from our healthcare system because the population is growing at a rampant pace and the quality medical services are kind of limited to those having a prosperous amount of capital okay? or in case of emergency, it is kind of very essential. Now to bring these services to masses. Okay, So in the case of uh, COVID-2020, we have seen that there were kind of like testing kits that were available for people to use at home. Okay. Or kind of like people were having great different amounts of projects. There were kind of scientific communities that tried to implement machine learning, use machine learning to identify or to predict some kind of like uh, model uh, prediction. In such cases, I don't know what the result was, but there was kind of like deep research going into that matter. There's still kind of like researches going into the field of cancer treatment and medical biology, okay? Molecular biology, I can say. Coming to like e-commerce, we have already seen how Amazon uses, we have like seen all the various aspects. Now, if you still want to know, you can always Google it out and you can see like, what are the other users? And you will be like surprised. I can say it that you will be surprised that being an active user also, I don't know what are the things that I don't know. Okay. There may be some applications that you have been using until now when you came to realize, okay, this was kind of like the machine learning application that I have been using. Okay. Finally, we will be focusing on finance. How machine learning is being used in finance. This is what our whole lecture is about and our upcoming lectures will be about, okay? So before like we have this kind of like one-on-one -on -one discussion, we will just go to a notebook and implement a basic machine learning, okay? So what I feel is that what I always preach and always like uh, recommend people to 
learn stuff by doing okay? so enough of talking let's go to a notebook and start coding mm -hmm. So it is being said that 90% of machine learning or uh, kind of like deep learning is kind of working with data. Once you have pure data, then you can like be moving on to creating models or implementing models and checking their stackings. Okay, that's the neat part. Okay, this is the dirty part of handling the data. Once you are proficient with handling the data, again you have to be proficient with kind of like analyzing analyzing the data cleaning the data pre-processing the data okay? so only when you clean the data and give it to the model it will be a beneficial term otherwise it will be all in a drain okay? if you just collect the data and somehow collect the data and just give it out to the model it will give you some bogus result okay? so there is a term called like garbage and garbage out you cannot give in the garbage to the model and expect some insights. You have to curate the data. You have to like clean out the garbage. You have to then uh, customize it as per your model that you are willing to train. And then you can expect some good results. So we are going to do a lot of work on the data part. And then we are going to start our work on the model part. Okay. So I'll not be like uh, uh, going through the entire thing actually because this is a short master class and i'll be sharing the link for this notebook but yes i'll be going through the overview and how we are going to approach to a machine learning problem so if you go to youtube if you go to github or if you go to kaggle there are many notebooks that you can find that will like showcase how they have been using and how they can generate insights okay so before we go deep into this notebook let me sh uh, show you this site that is Kaggle. Okay. Yeah. So this is a site that keeps on hosting competitions for machine learning enthusiasts. And the competitions are sometimes uh, hosted by private individuals, those who want to like solve a particular set of problems. Okay. So suppose they uh, suppose I am a financial enthusiast or I run a financial fintech company and I want to predict uh, the price or the movement of stocks okay so i will come to this platform and i will push the competition and people from all across the globe will participate into this competition will try to train their models using different kind of like uh, whatever they can okay and give me some result on basis of these results i'll be analyzing that okay if the model is working i may be going into further discussion with the teams so there is a very uh in the field of finance as we are into finance it will be like uh, let me show you that in, yeah couple of months back i think like it's uh, last year okay? yeah there is a company named optiver it's a very famous company and they have like uh, launched a competition to predict the volatility so if you are like kind of like experienced in the field of finance you have been uh, working with finance for a long time you must have been knowing what volatility means and how it is being useful. It is useful in the field of finance. Okay. So if you can predict volatility, you can kind of like make a risk-free profit, actually. That's kind of a very simplified version of it. But you can go through this notebook and you can see like how people have used machine learning to predict something as novel as that. Okay? So let's get back to our dynamic data set and what is actually in this data set. Okay. So we'll be first be loading this data and let me show you what is there. So you will be as a machine learning engineer, you'll be like given lots and lots of various kinds of data. Sometimes you'll be receiving e-commerce data that, okay, this is how the consumers have spent their money on these kind of like items and these many features and parameters. And from this data, I want to get an insight. You might be able to relate or you might not be able to relate depending on the complexity of the problem and the complexity of the data. Sometimes you will be given medical data. Okay, these are the X-ray scans. And then you have to like build a model on top of that, that uh, if it is a disease that needs to be taken care of or if it is just a simple kind of like uh, thing that we can ignore. Okay. 
So before building models, you have to understand each and everything about the data, all the features. Once you know it, you can build some hypothesis and then you can like start training models and testing out your models. Okay, Deployment comes a lot after that. So uh, if we can see that this training data set, we see in this like data, we have already been given train and test being split into different forms. Most of the data or the data we are going to collect isn't going to be this clean actually. It is going to be lot and lot messy and that's what your time will be mostly devoted to. Okay. So coming to this data, we have passenger ID. As you can see, we have survived. We have passenger class. We have name. We do not have passenger class. We have P class. Okay. So when you are giving P, when you are given P class, what do you make out of it? Okay. So it might be passenger class. And going further, let me analyze it that how people are divided into these classes. Okay. So let me give you a background about this Titanic data set. Okay. So when Titanic sunk, actually some people were saved, some people didn't survive. Okay. So depending on that. Can we train a model that, okay, if this is the parameter, passenger belongs to P class three and he is a male with age 22 and he has passed on some location, he has this ticket or fare or cabin. Can we predict that will he survive or not? A very vague problem actually. So people have already died and even those who have survived might be living or not, I don't know. but. This is kind of the hello world of programming. Okay? So whenever we are learning a new programming language, we kind of try to write hello world first. And once you are like into machine learning, this is the hello world of machine learning. Okay. So going forward, like uh, this exploratory data analysis part, we have already covered a couple of master classes exploring data. I think like four or five, fourth or fifth one, and we have in depth actually how to be analyzed. So I'll be just like wrestling through it and I'll be showcasing that how do we use descriptive analysis and kind of like statistics to get out of data and then we'll go for pre-processing. So we have seen like what is the number of items that we have passenger ID survive, P class, name, sex, age, siblings or pass, ticket, fare, cabin or embarked. Okay. Similarly we have test class you have now some data might not be having any value. So if we can see the cell number nine, we can see that the age column is having null values. Okay. So we are not having data in this. So this is a major problem that we keep on encountering day wise. So once you come into financial uh, domain, okay, you might be analyzing some companies that might not have given out uh, their uh, quarterly or annual result as per others, as per other companies in the same sector or other companies in the different sector. So it will become very difficult. Suppose you are com comparing banking stocks to a real estate stocks. Okay. So you have to compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges. And you have to scale out the data in such a way that they, becomes com they become comparable. Only then you can expect a machine learning or any kind of model to give you some insights. You can you cannot have one single like approach for all the data values, all the stocks, all the data. Okay. Going forward, we have to do something with this null values, and we have already discussed in our like previous masterclass when we were discussing EDA actually. So this is all a part of exploratory data analysis. So the first thing was uh, collecting the data. So that has already been done for this set. Second set is kind of like exploring the data. Like what do we get out of the data? How do we know this data? Let me get a feel of it. The third thing is kind of like removing the null values. Like we can do about it. What else we can do about it? And then scaling the data or customizing the data so that we can feed it to our model. Okay. So these steps are very essential. Before we begin, we will think about like creating a model. Okay. So these are all the things that we have already seen. Feature engineering is kind of like if we have text columns, suppose we have name, so these names are going to be all different. So can we give our model? Okay, so the passenger's name is Broad Mr. Owen Harris. Just because his name is Broad, Broad Mr. Owen Harris, will he survive 
no it didn't survive so it's zero here okay so can we give it to this model and we can like expect no we cannot like if someone's name was gaurav and he was like voting on titanic doesn't mean that he will be surviving okay there's no correlation that we can expect out of a name and his survival uh, again like if he is like someone as famous as a uh, president or prime minister then the case is different but yeah that's an outlier okay so these are all the things that we have to consider that we have to keep in mind when we are like working with data so maybe moving on like we can see that there is a lot much that has gone into like cleaning the data or, or like getting out insights from the data we can use all sorts of like visualizations we can all sorts of like statistics to get most out of the data okay so i'll be sharing this notebook and like you can go through it in case you have any questions you can like get back to us and i'll be very happy to uh, clear all your doubts so you can see that we have like created bar charts and plots that what is the age of people who have survived or who are dead actually so what is the embarked status from where they, where they have given their journey okay so what is the fair so can we have some kind of correlation that those who have paid higher fare for the journey on to titanic have they survived or not okay so there might be something that okay they are priority passengers as we have that in airline queue that if you are a priority passenger there's a very less chance that you are going to miss your flight okay so it's kind of like a game of imagination whatever you can imagine you can collect the data and then you can like uh, you know uh, try to predict try to make a correlation from like survival or not survival if i can go back into that time and if i have been like a responsibility of given the given the uh, responsibility of collecting the data i could have collected passengers health or something like that that is this passenger healthy or not is he suffering from any disease so that would might be having a better correlation of his survival okay so this kind of data so but again like we cannot go back to that time but for our future machine learning problems okay once we have tried and tested all our models and we are not having a satisfactory score to deploy it out then we can go back to our first problem that is collecting the data we can go out and get more data so suppose like you are kind of like having a feature of like uh, financial uh, financial data that okay i has taken p ratio or i have taken a couple of ratios ebitda ratio ebitda thing and all that financial ratios and try to predict its movement the stock prices movement over the next couple of months and the result is not satisfactory i have tried each and everything i have tried like all the models with all kind of like data cleaning and data combinations feature engineering but i am not getting the results that means i am lacking the data the relevant data i can say okay so i'll again go out in the market and i'll try to purchase or i will try to collect okay, the relevant data and then i'll again start all the steps from beginning so this is kind of a repetitive process okay you can keep like doing all the kind of repetition like till the end of your life and maybe you can have a model that works good enough for a certain amount of time this is also a very uh, kind of disappointing things in finance actually because something like once you have discovered your alpha and if you try to squeeze out the profit out of it then the market will adjust itself in such a way that the alpha starts diminishing okay so now you again have to like uh, work on the model itself the strategy itself okay so this is a never ending process so this is why uh, corporates or companies have teams of engineers who are day and night working rigorously on this kind of problems because entire thing depends on having a proper alpha and like kind of like stable okay so going forward like let's get to the model itself quickly so once we have all this kind of like so finally we have calculated this kind of this data okay so we have passenger class we have sex we have age see in the actual data we have male female but now we have zero one okay so we have done our feature engineering so that we can give this data to our model and it will be able to make some connections because it's all a game of numbers we cannot have like categorical or text data even the text 
that we are like uh, giving to chat GPT that text is also converted to numbers and these numbers are converted back to text so that you can converse uh, so efficiently with that. Okay? So these are all our numbers and we can play with them. Okay. We have given, we have embarked, we have titles. So everything is kind of being categorized. Now we can come to our modeling of ML model. Okay. So we have imported a couple of models. We have imported key neighbors classifier, decision tree classifier, random forest classifier, Gaussian naive bias, and support vector. Okay. So we can either do regression, but yeah, there is no kind of nothing kind of regression in this problem. So what should we do? Like, do we go for regression problem or do we go for classification problem? That depends on the kind of like problem that you are solving. So in this Titanic data set, we have only two variables, two outcomes. Either the person is dead or the person has survived. So this is a kind of like classification. Okay. Again, in finance, when you come to like uh, feature engineering or kind of like this kind of problem where you, where you have to select that, do I want to predict the percentage profit or the percentage of movement that the stock is going to make? Or do I want to like just classify that if the stock is going to go above or the stock is going to go below? Okay. So from the point of inflection, like from the point of like the testing of the model, we can either go for categorical, we can either go for like regression type models. Okay. So here we are using classifiers. So we are going for classification type models. Okay. We have done cross-validation. Cross-validation is something I would talk to you in the coming master class. And it is sometime, uh, something kind of like uh, a folding, okay? So let's take a paper and fold it into a couple of steps, okay? So each of the fold is kind of a step, okay? So we can either pick the data randomly for testing or we can do some kind of like folding method okay so uh, don't worry like i'll be covering this out in the upcoming master classes for ml actually so we have now done everything now just we have to train the data and we have to predict the scores okay yeah so we have all this kind of like uh, open source models models from sklearn actually so if i can show you let me show you this one SKLearn. Okay, so this is a very beautiful library actually that is open source and that is being rampantly used. Okay, so for all kind of like machine learning. So everyone who is starting with machine learning and even even pros who are kind of like using machine learning for in their day-to-day -day lives, they all start with SKLearn, scikit-learn. Okay, so this has a beautiful API uh, customization and you can use its API anywhere. Okay. So you can explore this library, explore this documentation as much as you can. Okay. If you go for like ML interviews, okay, machine learning interviews, you'll be asked to kind of like implement these classification or regression models using NumPy or Pandas, okay, using NumPy essentially, so that you understand the basic. Okay. See, anyone can like call this API and train and fit and predict the output. But the thing is that you have to understand the mathematics behind it so that you can uh, you know, efficiently and you know where to use, where not to use. Okay. So as I have discussed classification and regression problem, same kind of like even in classification, you have like multiple models. Okay. So in this, uh, in this model, like we have imported everything, most of like models, k neighbors classifier, we have used decision tree classifier, we have used random forest classifier. Okay. Now, Suppose like we want to like optimize our decision tree classifier. What are the hyperparameters that we need to tune so that we can get most out of it? And for this, you have to basically know how this decision tree classifier works. If you do not know, you will not be able to uh, kind of like optimize it. You might be like able to do some kind of brute force approach, but that is not going to help you in the long run. Okay? Might be like in the future, you might be having some kind of constraint on the resources. And brute force is kind of like a very bad thing for such kind of scenarios. In future, when you are going for deep learning, then you can you cannot have brute force for all the kind of like uh, problems. So you have to know how these kind of models basically work. 
okay and these are kind of all interesting topics once you get into it you'll be like having some kind of like preconceptions that if i have this kind of data then you'll be having some kind of like intuition that okay if i tune my decision tree or k neighbors i might be having a better kind of like score okay. now the scoring part is actually a very different kind of like thing okay. we have accuracy scores so let me like just go and like show you how we have seen the scores we have seen like scores and these are kind of like 0.7 and 0.75 so these are percentages and what are the percentages these are kind of like cross validation scores okay so scoring so what we are what we are scoring we are scoring accuracy and we are scoring on like different kind of folds so that's what we have like done 10 splits uh, all these terms if you are a beginner in kind of machine learning these terms might be a bit of uh, new to you but trust me like these are very interesting topics and these are very easy also to understand once you have understood it once you will not be able to forget it forever okay so yeah in the knn classification we have seen this kind of accuracy and once you take average out of it we have seen 80% of accuracy okay in the decision tree we have seen like 80.36 in the knn we have seen 80.7 in random forest it's not random it's random yeah we have seen 80.14 in the naive bias we have we have seen 78.67 in the svm we have 83 okay so out of all these models that we have trained on the data okay the highest we are getting is svm now we can again go out and like improve this SVM to its maximum potential. We can consider a couple of models and try to ramp up by tuning the hyperparameters. Okay. So this is all depending on the kind of like the problem that you are solving. Okay. So if you are a large enterprise and you have been like given a responsibility to uh, like detect the fraud that is happening on the credit cards usage, you'll have to like ramp up your accuracy. It might it must go above like something 90% or something like that, depending on the firm's kind of reputation and their kind of like management. Okay, what whatever they decide. Okay. And once you come in finance, even like 60 to 70 percent of accuracy is good enough. Okay. I can anyone can make money with that kind of accuracy. Okay. So this is something that differs from firm to firm or problem to problem. That you have to like be a good judge of it. You can like, uh, and that also like it involves time. So it becomes kind of, you know, uh, do you want to deploy the model with 60% accuracy today or do you want to deploy the model of 90% accuracy 10 years later? So this is kind of like you have to decide that when you want to make money in finance. So this is all about this notebook. So try to uh, read more about it. Try to like come up with the problems. And the most important thing is how do you uh, build a model on finance? The first model will be very crude, will not be like uh, giving out any good result. Maybe like even 50% will be more than enough. But the thing is that you have to start. You have to start building models. You have to like get into the field of machine learning. Okay? And future traders 10 years down the line or 20 years down the line, they're not going to be just a trader okay they are not going to be just a fund managers who are going to like read out reports and everything they are going to be data scientists okay because each and everything is going to be consumed in the form of data and wherever there is a data you can do something with it you can apply a model and you can get some insight out of it so this is a very good intersection of uh, data and finance machine learning and in the future, I'm very much bullish on this kind of like aspects. Given the field of anything, if you are in the field of finance, that is going to be a very rewarding one. Okay? Let me tell you that. Because currently, it is not even like 10% of financial applications that, we are, that are using machine learning. And going forward, like if you can start out your own niche for this field of like machine learning in the finance, then might be you might be becoming a pioneer in the field okay so moving on like uh, let's go out to the different sectors different like parts of machine learning like it's not just about we have some features and we just like uh, get out the get out 
of the variables and we train the model, test the model, and predict the model. It is much more than that. Okay. So in, even in machine learning, there are several categories. We have supervised learning, we have unsupervised learning, we have reinforcement learning, we have deep learning, and we have transfer learning. Okay. So let me start from the transfer learning. Okay. Suppose I have built a model and I have built it for, uh, let's say, futures data. And you want to implement the same model on the options data. So how you can do it? So you can take my model, you can remove certain parameters that make it biased for the futures data, and then you can train it out on the options data. Okay. There is a slight training, and then you can like, it's kind of, you know, a plug and play kind of model. Okay. So you can go to Hugging Face libraries and try to take out the models relevant models and then play with your own data. Okay, so if I got to, if I show you this site, this is a very good community okay, of people who are playing with models. Like they have all these kind of like models all the way from mid journey, all the way from wrappers of these models where you can directly take the data, take the models. Either you can like deploy it on their own site, on their servers, or you can take it out, download it, depending on the authors, and then you can tune it to your own requirements. Okay. So if you are going to be like heavy with machine learning models in the future, uh, you'll always be resource constrained. So in case of resource constraint, you are going to use someone else's model, you are going to train it out, a couple of parameters and then you are going to use it out or test it out. In the extreme cases, if none of it works, then only like you're going to like have a model built from scratch all the way so that it can fit your requirements. Okay. So this is how we proceed. Okay. Yeah. So we have deep learning. So deep learning is kind of like mimicking a human brain. So we have all sort of neurons. We have all sort of like uh, connections between the neurons. We have uh, these gradients, and then we train those neurons that okay, this is the digit or this is something. This is an image, and I have converted this image into some form of numbers, pixel numbers, and then I'm giving it to the model to identify what that image actually is. Okay. So we can. Uh, I'll just show you ingredient recognition. Okay, so you can see all these projects, okay, they can identify whatever you write on a piece of paper. So these can recognize a digit using a special class of model that is CNN, okay? that is like convolutional neural network. So how can we like, okay, this has already been done field of like image recognition. So if you have a bit of imagination, you can already imagine that, okay, if something can recognize a handwritten digit, can it recognize a pattern that is being formed in kind of a stock market candlesticks? So this is this is kind of like if a model can identify or segregate dog with cat or some food or pizza with a uh, kind of like vegetables. Cannot this model or can I train the model so that it recognizes a full flag pattern or something like that? Top spinning or uh, some kind of like bearish flag pattern, some kind of like wedge triangle or something like that. Pattern recognition, what I'm talking about. Okay. So you have to be very curious when you are like uh, delving into the field of finance or delving into the field of like machine learning and finance boundary because the possibilities are kind of endless. Okay. And you have to be very cautious that how you are going to use your resources to train these models. So let's go forward and like uh, see reinforcement learning, unsupervised and supervised. These are kind of like common and you can like uh, Google it out. Uh, yeah. So what are the applications? Let's like discuss a couple of minutes on this one. Yeah. So the first one is credit scoring. So in the previous, like before the era of machine learning, people were like uh, using 
common if else conditions like uh, what is the previous credit score of this company or this firm the government and what is going to be like uh, what are the parameters has the parameters changed okay has the macroeconomic activities changed to a certain extent to downgrade or upgrade this scoring so now this scoring actually works uh, people are using machine learning to score the companies to score the firms to score the government so that uh, they can bet on their bonds or their kind of like financial instruments okay going forward we have fraud detection okay so we all have been using credit cards okay and if you have a uh, kind of like uh, made good amount of purchases and suddenly like you go out of pattern so a while back like uh, normally we i was like using my credit card for like purchasing or paying bills at grocery or something like uh, restaurants or something like that the bill was always kind of like under 5k okay and one day like i was uh, purchasing a laptop for like 70 to 80k and i got a call from like Uh, the bank okay because that was being an outlier and that was out of my pattern of spending and that was being detected by the model of the bank that okay this might be a fraud that i as a user never spend beyond 5k at once at a time and suddenly like i am going out of way and i am purchasing something by making a purchase of 80k okay so this might be a fraud okay and that has like stopped my transaction and first the bank has verified me with my credentials and then they have allowed the transaction so this is a very like you know uh, a good use of fraud detection okay with so many transactions happening each and every second making a model other than machine learning is kind of a ridiculous thing to ask for okay a person cannot even sit and like uh, analyze that if this uh, uh grocery spent that i'm doing of rupees 80 is it like valid or is it a fraud okay so these are the things where like machine learning finds a huge application going forward in asset management like we have uh, seen a rampant rise in the robo advisory field that what companies are worth buying are they having kind of good books or not okay so if you see there are a lot of anomalies that exist in the field of finance that we can uh, predict the company is going to shoot up in the future or not it all depends on the data that you give it you can give all sorts of fundamental data you can give all sorts of technical data and then you have to like you know identify what data contains features contains some signal and then you have to refine the signals using the models so this is all the game of like uh, robo advisory asset management okay? you can do sentiment analysis there are a lot of models that use this sentiment analysis because finance is all about like behavior people if they feel that uh, okay the twitter is kind of like being taken by elon musk and if people do not feel good about it they are going to dump the stocks and the stock prices will deplete okay so you can use all sorts of news data you can do natural language processing and then you can come up with sentiment this is having this companies has been in news for a couple of months and it has given a lot of negative news and on the news we have people have traded blindly and they have dumped the stocks and now that some kind of positive news is happening people are kind of slow to react to the positive news and can i position myself early into this process so that when people are going to like uh, buy the stocks on the positive news i'll be like the one making the money first So these are all the problems that we do in our firm day to day basis and try to generate alpha for our clients and for our projects actually okay now the problem is of financial forecasting so the company will uh, post out set earning q earnings quarterly earnings and annual uh, meetings each and every year each and every quarter so depending on uh, the performance or the various parameters of the company's fundamentals can i predict the profitability of the company in the upcoming quarter or in the upcoming year or let's say like 3 years down the line so this is this is all a part of financial forecasting you can use all sorts of model you can use arima model or time series models that we are talking about so all we are trying to do is kind of like having or increasing the predictability 
okay of our model going on finally we have anomaly detection that is the data having some kind of outlier so in kind of like options or futures or any kind of trading we are always looking for kind of you know anomaly okay if the open interest is kind of like out of the roof or if it is in a ban limit ban period or if the delivery volume is kind of like uh, slumping down day to day basis can we have something like comparing with the previous averages the average delivery volume is kind of 50% and today or like last some weeks or some days we have seen it shooting up to 80% or shooting down uh, to 20% can we forecast something is there a signal in this kind of hypothesis okay so in previous master classes we have discussed about hypothesis testing we have discussed about exploratory data analysis and going further we are going to discuss about combining all this data and getting some insights some useful insights so that we can make some profits okay so we can maximize some profits and minimize our risk okay so if we can like come across some companies that have bogus earning reports that have some kind of flaws and we can detect it out so now if you see an earning report of a company they might be having kind of like various parameters and if you are going to compare all of it to its previous or to its peers or to its sectors then that's going to take a huge amount of your life actually but now if you train it if you train a model to identify such outliers then you are going to have a model that can give you the result okay this company is having some bogus reports it might be a fair chance that someone will pick it up or even you might pick it up and you can dump the stocks and the company is going to fall okay so there are very exciting problems on this verge of the cross section of financial finance and machine learning okay so the field of data is actually very interesting and very beautiful so if you have like any questions or any suggestions like feel free to like ask or uh, give it out to us and we can like work on it and if you are already having some kind of like uh, repository or something that you want to share with us go ahead and i'll be all thankful and helpful okay yeah so now is the time for like q and a session so i'll be available for next 5 to 10 minutes if you have any questions or if you come across like anything that you want to discuss please do it or otherwise like uh, after even after this uh, master class you can write to us you can post on our linkedin page you can uh, give us in our groups and i'll be happy to solve okay
thank you guys if you have any questions uh, please feel free to write to us and we'll be happy solving it all so let's end this and have a happy sunday bye